Hello everyone, today we have new video review and as you can see this time we are going to talk about fresh release from Edward. It comes in 170 second scale and note that we have here a limited edition which is named as a Guns Bunny and it is dedicated to quite a famous aircraft. You can see it on the box art is a B25J and here we actually get markings which are dedicated to Pacific and uh, CBI so I remember that there should be 10 of them in this box we will check it uh, once we will be taking a look at the assembly menu maybe on the box we will also see the markings but overall box art looks good and we have a commercial sample here so that's the final shape of this kit and you will get exactly the same stuff as what you will see in this video review so first of all uh, box size is typical for uh, kits from edward i would say mainly 148 scale profit packs but here we have twin engine in 170 second scale so that's why and here is comparison with my hand next on the side here here you will find some safety information and also address of the manufacturer, kit number is 2139 and here on the other side you can see, yes, so there are 10 markings included for this aircraft. But as I said before, we will be also checking them when we will be taking a look at the assembly menu. So here is what we have inside and there is plenty of space surprisingly and as you can guess this limited edition it is based on Hasegawa plastic so that's why it should be quite a fun to build and now I'm going to take it out and we will check everything closer so as you can see or you can hear the plastic bag is sealed I will have to tear it apart a bit in order to get all the parts outside and then we can talk about the contents of this plastic bag so just give me a second okay so i suggest we start with a gray plastic spruce because here we have mix of various parts on the spruce so for example here you can see interconnection between two and note that nose cone or nose section is molded as a single piece part which is really great such design should help you avoid any unnecessary seams and gaps and here by the way you can see the bulkheads i guess it will be used for the wing support and we also have some pre-molded features so if i zoom in you can see what i'm talking about and this is really great even though this is a 170 second scale kit still we get some stuff which is uh, really good to have on aircraft model and let's not forget that this is a twin engine aircraft so that's why i do not underestimate it even though scale might look small still it will take some place or some space on your table and shelf so that's why it's worth considering how you will display it next we have pair of identical plastic spruce so i will show you only one because these are basically the same parts twice and i suggest we are not zooming out so we will just check it like this maybe i'll place it yeah now it fits properly so here we have landing gear wheels we won't need them because edward supplies a proper resin replacement which is obviously better in features but here we also have some bombs some engine parts as far as you can see propeller and here we have more of the engine parts really good to see the uh, nozzles of the engines the frontal section molded as a single piece part because such design will help you to get a bit more realistic appearance and of course it's easier to install you will have let's say fewer chances to get everything in the wrong position so that's definitely a nice thing to have and if i flip it over inside we have guiding pins where it is necessary so they will come handy for the proper placement of these parts and next we can move to the larger plastic sprue because here we have fuselage halves and also engine gondolas so here they are and of course fuselage halves they are molded without tail section it means no tail fin or no tail wings either so you have to install them separately and if i zoom in so that you can check what is actually we um get here as external features you can see the recess panel lines and they look quite nice i mean this plastic from hasegawa is not that young it is out in the market for quite some time and that's why it's even more impressive that it still looks decent and especially for this scale i think this is more than enough for the out of the box build and if i flip it over we even have some interior features which is rather surprising to see even today because not that many brands include this out of the box especially in a 172nd scale they just skip it 
and do not bother themselves by including it, even the big brands, let's say, and you know what I'm talking about. Next, we continue with the mix of various parts. So here we have underwing cannons, we also have landing gear legs, these are main legs. We have bulkheads for the interior, cockpit floor, also tail wings, which actually these are tail fins with rudders. Here we have tail wings, which should be glued out of two halves. And as far as you can see, the tail fins are one piece, so we can check it. Yeah, here you can see it. And of course, for tail wings, we have guiding elements, so it will be easier to align them together. There we have also the cockpit seats, nose landing gear leg, and also some parts for the interior. Everything looks cool, and I have no doubt that maybe Edward will produce some upgrades for such release, because this kit definitely deserves it. And next we continue also with wing parts. So as you remember we are dealing with a twin engine aircraft, so that's why here we have the reduced slots for the engine gondolas, so that they will fit uh, without any unnecessary gaps or seams in this area. As for the external features, I think again we can zoom in and you understand what I'm talking about. We have recessed panel lines, rivets, everything looks cool and attachment points are thin enough in order to carefully separate such large parts. Note that wing mechanization, it means the flaps and ailerons, they are molded in so you won't be able to move them much but that's something what is I would say expected from 172nd scale aircraft. Even though this one is quite big so it could have been uh, separate parts. Who knows, maybe again Edward will produce the separate PE set which will actually fix this issue. Next we continue with a clear sprue. So here we have quite a tricky thing because again it is sealed plastic bag but I already torn it apart. So just give me a moment. By the way quite funny note is that here we also have the made in Japan for Edward, as you can see here. So it shows that these sprues were produced specifically for this limited edition. And as for the clear parts, here we have canopy parts and also some, uh, let's say, transparent sections for the um, turrets and also for the fuselage positioning lights. Everything looks really great, so it's just a matter of careful masking. As you can see, all parts are clear and crisp. And next we continue with the resin parts. So as I said before, here we get resin wheels and both main wheels and nose wheels, they will be replaced with the resin. So here I will place them side by side. These are main wheels and this is the nose wheel. So obviously they are superior to what we get out of the box in the plastic. I mean, I already mentioned that plastic is not that new. So here you can see there are a lot of features actually copied in these resin parts. Tires look really good and they should be a direct replacement. So you don't have to change anything in original plastic parts. It's just a matter of installing them and maybe a painting them and I hope that Edward also included masks for them because this is a limited edition and limited editions from Edward they usually pack mask shit for the clear parts and for the landing gear wheels if it is needed. So I'm I would say right about masks. I'm trying to open this plastic bag because here we actually get two mask sheets which are pre-cut and frankly speaking, I'm not sure where this one will be used. I guess it should be used for some of the marking options. We will check it in the assembly manual. While here we get masks for the canopy and also for landing gear wheels. They look great and they're ready to be used straight away. So as I said, they're pre-cuts. So that's why you just have to pick them with the tweezers and apply them on your model. Another thing which comes in pair is the... PE fret, so we have one unpainted and one pre-painted PE fret. And I guess it's not difficult to understand that pre-painted will be handy for the cockpit features and unpainted it will be handy both for interior and exterior things on your aircraft. So as you can see a lot of parts to apply. Do not forget that this is a 170 second scale, so here is comparison with my fingertips so that you understand the size of this model. Uh, and also of this part, so some of them will require the use of the tweezers because otherwise you won't be able to get them into the right spot with the bare fingers only. 
Next we have also large decals sheet. Actually two of them. They come in a receivable plastic bag as well, so it's just a matter of opening it. Of course, both are printed in Edward, so you shouldn't be worried about quality issues. I think everything looks great out of the box. It's more of a, I would say, deciding which marking you would like to see on your aircraft because as you remember we have quite powerful options with really great nose arts which will be visible on 170 second scale aircraft as well so here you can see them all i can see that we have segmentation which is a really handy feature because basically you can just cut out the section and use it for your marking which you will pick you don't have to cut through the whole decal sheet just to pick for example this number and to apply it on your model to give you the idea about printing quality maybe i can show the symbols a bit closer so as you can see everything looks readable and really like how edward uh, prints their decals and they did a really great progress in this area as you remember we also have several ways of decals application so that's why it's really nice technology here we also have a second decal sheet with stencils and also with some cockpit decals in case you are not fan of p parts or you are unable to apply them next we continue with assembly manual so this one comes in form of large color printed brochure here i should zoom out a bit and here you can see it so on the cover page obviously we have the same image as on the box art history note is surprisingly short i was expecting a bit more next we continue with the parts map colors chart and assembly process starts and what is interesting here is that assembly process starts with bombs and also the fuselage walls not with the cockpit cockpit comes here on the step c and d and then we continue by installing some P parts or even completely replacing the plastic parts with P. So pay attention to this. It will be quite a, I would say, process to change everything for the P parts, but you will be rewarded with a really good looking cockpit. So here we continue with more of the internal elements. As you can see, there is a lot of uh, stuff which should be installed in the fuselage including the P parts and then only on the step it's not even mentioned which step it is but we replace uh, or join the fuselage house only on this step next we continue with landing gear so do not forget to use the resin wheels instead of original plastic ones we install all this stuff onto the wing together with engine gondolas. We assemble the engine. Again, apply some P parts as far as you can see for the ignition lines. Next is the propeller. And what is interesting is that it is recommended not to glue it because we have the polycaps inside, so they will be movable. And then we start working on the nose section. As you remember, we have a single piece nose section, which is really great because it will speed up the assembly process. You won't have to be worried about any gaps in this area. We also assemble the machine gunner turret, which will be placed right in the middle of the fuselage. And here we have installation of some P parts. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. And... I'm just looking what will be actually covered by masks because we have masks for the turret, we have masks for the canopy, we have them for landing gear wheels and you should also use them for the interior covering. So manufacturer actually proposes you to cover first the interior and then you apply the external paint as well. So here you can see the first marking option from July 1945. Next we continue with pair from spring 1945 and March 1945, which is pretty much the same. Next we have the both aircraft from 1945, but this one is from May. As you can see, quite a bright nose art. That's what I was talking about. Here, by the way, here is the um, small suggestion on how to use the masks which i was wondering where they should be used so yes they should be handy for the uh, nose art so that you can apply the white backing color which is necessary in order to have this decal looking good and bright and here we have aircraft from july 1945 this one is from august and one more 
pair here is from 1945 as well, as you can guess. And the last aircraft with this crocodile head is from July 1945. Of course, on the last page you will also find the stenciling guide, which is, uh, I would say, recommended to follow, because this aircraft will only benefit from more tiny stencils on it. So, this release should be already available, you can get it on official Edward website, but it's better to hurry because it's a limited edition, as you remember. And of course, I will be happy to hear your opinion about such a list, do not forget to write it here in the comment section below. And if you like this video and you want to help us, press the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I will see you in the next video review as usual. Thank you for joining me today, and bye!